is up, Monkey Alert Nation? You got your boys Monkey and Egg back in the house. Susan thought she could shut a brother down, but we played this game too many times to fall for those tricks. I'm Simeon Jimmy, joined as always by Egg. Your Eggie, favorite Egg. Woo! The That's greatest right. feature in a documentary you will ever see. More on that later. Eggy, people are probably wondering what happened to the birthday podcast. We were doing a birthday live stream on July 13th, two weeks ago, as of this upload. Where did it go? Why are we cowards, Eggy? We were too afraid of our own voices, and we said, no, nobody, can. this cannot see the light of day. Deleted forever. Is that what happened? Well, from my understanding, I think that we just appreciated the commenters and the supporters too much. And as we know, YouTube, they hate people that actually love the platform or anything on it. And they constantly do everything in their power to make it more unhospitable. So our good old Simeon Hospitality that really brought all the boys to the yard with those milkshakes. Uh, that Damn was right. And Susan's. I mean, listen, she's got that centaur action going on, but we're only loving the human species, okay? Basically, we were an hour into the stream having a good time, you know, reaping in the rewards of a birthday super chat. And all of a sudden, I, it pops up on my screen. Uh, it's something about a community guideline strike and in, in, inciting violence or racism or something complete bullshit that had nothing to do with us. And of course, when you get a community guideline strike, you're not allowed to stream or upload for a full week. So if you were wondering, hey, why is Simeon Jimmy Treehouse so barren Von Brunk this week or that, that week? Uh, sorry, it was the poosening, the susaning. Uh, I guess Poozin is a good name for the new Indian guy who replaced Susan. <laughs> I've just been saying Indian Susan because <laughs> I I don't know if I've ever even seen his name. I know uh, in that new JonTron video he did with that special man, um, he said something about the Indian CEO of Google. I've, or I thought they I thought the the CEO of Google was a nice Israeli man, but uh, hmm. I don't know. It's about time we got some diversity, but you know they're really trying to shut a gamer's voice down, so I just can't be going for it. Yeah, so when that happens to me, and like I said, I've played this game before, I know that once you get one guideline strike, there's five more coming within a 24-hour period, and you're going to lose all of your life's work. So I did have to make the rational decision to uh, delete any upload that I know for a fact has multiple N-words in it. So if you were a fan of uh, Is It Kino, The Lost Episodes Volume 1, wherein Biggs uh, let out a whole flurry of hate speech, or a fan of Bugs Bunny re-upload where Asperger was uh, giving out a whole flurry of hate speech. Or a fan of uh, uh, Sonic Burger 2 where Asperger was letting out a whole flurry of hate speech. My apologies, I did delete them as a precaution. Because uh, I know better. I know these fuckers are going to just go through and delete everything and the whole channel will be gone. So... If you didn't see all that shit while you had the chance, I'm sorry. Maybe it'll go up on Monkey Mafioso. But for the good viewers who were dying to see that birthday stream, Eggy, I think perhaps we should recap it as best we can, if we can even remember those things we said three days ago. <laughs> well, I remember we commented briefly on Boogie's new love interest. Uh, you know, he found this nice gal, I think, at the same place that JF Jaripi found his wife. Now, by any chance, does he only take photos with her from, uh, from this specific? <laughs> angle because uh, uh, well you'd have to definitely zoom in you got to do see you come in and uh see as a person of size you got to do a little pressure to the jawline make it pop out a little bit and you see the camera's coming up right and he goes i don't think we can even bring the webcam to that angle but you know you get you, you get a little pressure on the jawline so it looks like you have a human shaped face you get the camera right about here and then you do the boogie piano key smile uh so you think this these angles on him and his new uh, eighteen-year-old GF with this uh, what fifty-year-old man, you know, basically grandpa style here. No, eighteen and fifty. I let that slide. That's right. <laughs> but you think that these angles are because of his, um, let's say. Uh, feelings of inadequacy with his appearance and perhaps not because the woman in the photo is insisting upon this high angle shot. Do you think maybe there might be something wrong with her face that she does not want us to see? Well, she looks like in a, a human perspective. They have this thing called like forward posture. I forget exactly what the actual term is, but all these zoomers nowadays, they be on their phone, they won't be off their damn phone. So I guess that makes them like 
do this all the time or something. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I can just hold my phone here. I don't know what the deal is, but I guess maybe it's because they're on it from like infancy now that they're having this natural evolution. So the picture I saw, it kind of looked like her uh, body is shaped kind of like an upside down J. She kind of had like, it looked like her spine was going through like this new technological evolution. She might be the halfway point between human and uh, <laughs> the creature from the alien movies that's got the long thing coming out. Uh, you know, with all that being said, of course, obviously I'm a jealous troll, you know. Uh, mm. Well, I'm wondering, <laughs> what is the appeal for an 18-year-old non obese woman to be dating literal gray-haired 5,000 pound grandpa boogie. A lot of people are assuming it's some sort of gold digging, but uh, let me just tell you folks, there is no gold in them there hills. Boogie is not the man you want to go to for monetary uh, a life of luxury or anything like that. So, Eggy, why is this woman even bothering with putting herself out there saying, I'm willing to suck this man's penis? Well, you know, there really is a hierarchy to these things. I've seen some strange things. I've seen women, you know, if, they, if they're if they only sitting at 15 followers, they're definitely willing to do what it takes to get up that 200 follower level. You know, it's, it's, it's a ratio sort of growth. So this woman probably didn't really have any kind of online presence. I could be totally wrong. She might have had like 100,000 or something. I don't believe so. I feel like this is where the play is being made. You know, get your name circulating in the blogs. We've seen this happen before, even in the mainstream, uh, I guess, quote unquote, you know, pop culture world where you had some uh, women, uh, you know, for instance, somebody like successful mogul Black China or uh, who's that one? Krishan Rock is uh, one that's been doing the rounds in the recent year or two. These are women who didn't really have a presence to any impactful degree but they found themselves in a situation with a more uh, trending man and that was able to sort of elevate their presence to where they were able to kind of get a platform started for themselves, get some social media going on for themselves, income from that for themselves, and then see themselves out. So, I mean, listen, either way, even if she's with Boogie for Life, I know, not, not wishing any harm, but, uh, you know, she could probably still be having a full functional decades long marriage with another man and maybe getting some money off that tubes on the side how desperate do you have to be to see boogie 1488 as your stepping stone into stardom and fame on the internet like okay i'll, I'll get started here i'll latch onto a guy with such rising soaring popularity and then when i break up with him in a year and i can make my little drama video crying oh he abused me then i'll get even more fans hey. and she thinks it's going to launch some sort of big platform for her I've had women try to, you know, involve themselves with me to such ends, and I have maybe like a thousandth of one percent of Boogie's current by the numbers uh, breakthrough or draw. So I mean, yeah, they're out there. I mean, especially nowadays with women that age, the one that the age of the women that Boogie has uh, started dabbling in at, at this time. Uh, you know, everybody's on social media. Everybody's doing everything. Everybody's got all the everything under the sun. They're trying to play every card to get a little bit of buzz going on. So if you can find that breakthrough route, if Boogie can overlook his big, uh, you know, five gallon bucket of breakfast gravy and look over and drool at you just as much, you're <laughs> on the way to being something special. I'll just remind Boogie. There's a an old school rule that I think we should all. Uh, pay attention to is called uh, half your age plus seven uh, maybe invest in that one do a little math and realize this is fucked up and retarded <laughs> and kind of sickly and uh, you know what speaking of celebrity relationships on the lost episode that lost media better call bedhead bernie to figure out this one mm. but we also talked about the jonah hill text message controversy and basically we boiled down our analysis to jonah hill might have been a little insecure not wanting his lady posting bikini photos but <laughs> you know he's being very polite and mature and saying hey these are my standards these are my boundaries as a man and if you don't respect them then uh, i'm fine with being your friend i think that nuance of it has been lost on a lot of the roasties on Twitter who are just fuming with rage that a man would dare have any expectation at all of anything in his relationship. Uh, did you have anything to add to that? I think you got a pretty good uh, 
beat on it. See, the thing with these women, um, the kind of unlovable, complete atrocities that walk in human form on this planet, the ones that are doing all this tweeting, uh, if you ever find yourself around these people, there's a reason why they spend all their time tweeting. Uh, all the rational people like Jonah Hill, the Jonah Hills of their lives, if you will, have said, wow, that is an insufferable person who nobody will ever want to be around for their entire life. And they essentially find themselves locked up in the virtual Twitter box, just uh, raging, seething and coping while downing several different SSRIs with a <laughs> bottle of wine every night. Uh, yeah, you saw a lot of that. Um, you know, I've been on Twitter for a couple of years now, but anytime there was some major political event, uh, you know, to where it was trending on Twitter, it was always really a treat to click on that hashtag. And you would just see a lot of these people, you know, the, the unmarried 55 year old uh, who just, you know, on every medication under the sun, absolute alcoholic and would just go into tirades and now they actually have on Twitter, I hear you can write like 10 paragraphs. They yeah. increase the tweet limit like crazy. So I can only imagine how much worse it is now that they don't have to break it up and just only do like 100 tweets a day. So, I mean, women of that variety really hate a man who has any sort of spine, any mm -hmm. kind of backbone. I'm, and Jonah Hill, I mean, I don't, he's a Hollywood guy. I'm sure he's willing to do a lot for uh, to make ends meet. Uh, but... Just to show any kind of spine whatsoever, it's very off-putting to these deranged, mentally ill uh, sickos. Yeah, people on Twitter expect you to just, you know, like, be like Adam22 instead of Jonah Hill. Just literally film your own wife getting fucked by a BBC and you should be proud of her and and celebrate this great achievement in life. But uh, if you have any standards at all and you, you don't want your woman being a literal fucking whore, then uh, you're trash, you should be canceled, it's over for you. And you know what the best part of that is, is then about, let's say, 18 to 24 months out from celebrating you being so open-minded, um, and now you were exploiting an innocent woman oh. who she just didn't know better, you know, you went along with it, supported her to be defiling herself, and now you are scum of the earth for not having a woman's best interest in mind, and you're getting canceled again. But enough about Boogie. <laughs> we also mentioned that you finally saw the video of Heartsy Protsy prank calling the suicide hotline. We had fun talking about that. Do you have any thoughts for Heartsy now? Should he do it again? <clears throat> uh, well, so upon my first viewing of the video, um, spoiler alert, at the conclusion of the video, it was an epic troll. Um, but we, my understanding going into viewing this video was that it was uh, of an authentic nature. And it sounded very authentic. His grief and misery sounded authentic. It is authentic, I think. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever looked in our Discord, but it's uh, mainly just hearts and complaining <laughs> about being short. Okay, well. Basically, like 90% of messages is that, and then 10% is toot, like bitching about Bojack Horseman. Hey, you know what? Tom Cruise was like five foot four, and, you know, he's still a box office smash mm -hmm. hit, so Heartsy, he's going to be all right. But. So he's talking to the female, you know, minimum wage volunteer. She probably gets like one donut and a cup of coffee for an eight-hour shift. I think they legitimately don't get paid anything at all at the suicide hotline. <laughs> I think it is just strictly they, they volunteer. They leave and uh, they have to go back around to the customer side afterwards to cope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, after their shift, they have to call in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, so he's like, Hartsy starts getting to, yeah, you know, I've really been into this thing called Black Pill, and I've really been into, like, you know, I, I really believe in that a lot, and... You know, the fucking Chads and the fucking Stacys and... Yeah, I have to you don't think he's genuine in those well, beliefs? No. It's no. So he, at the towards the end of this call, then he's like, "Oh, by the way, this is uh, this was I believe in his words, ninety percent a joke, or something." So maybe but this could that's a cope for the audience. Okay, <laughs> we know he's serious. <laughs> but in any case, uh, when he started mentioning such poignant terminology, you know, I did have to stand up and give a standing ovation. <laughs> he says the black pill by name, so you yeah. Know, I think I'm pretty sure that uh, my case file probably has a. Uh, little notation somewhere in it about this now unlisted or unlisted at the time rather it's probably not even around anymore the unlisted uh, 32 view video that had, <laughs> saw had like 10 negative comments regardless of even having just the 32 views um, but at least you know what no matter what even if those haters they didn't want to hear some real red pills being dropped on this volunteer suicide hotline worker um <laughs> listen i mean they should know, and they should know these things they should be fully well-rounded in their education of terminally online mentally ill children all women are stacy's and there are no megan's i think that's the big takeaway from the video that's right but 
Just to make one more final point, Hartsy does spend approximately the last 10% of this 20 minute video repeatedly uh, showing grief and uh, <laughs> regret, or, shame. regret and shame, yes, for just uh, soaking up this time. There was probably about 100 people who were trying to call in, but he was busy <laughs> rambling about. And 10 people about, committed suicide because he was <laughs> clogging the phone line. Rambling about memes, probably, uh, you know, the guy who was developing the plans to the Ocean Gate submarine was like, <laughs> oh. I can't put these people. I, I need. To, we need to go back. I need to. I just, I just gotta. Somebody's gotta knock some sense into me. Uh, it's still busy. Fifteen minutes later. Uh, whatever. Let's I, 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 I approve. It's approved. Let's just go. I don't care anymore. The world will burn. So even the deaths of those billionaires, you're, you're putting that on Hartsy's shoulders here. Well, that's a dramatic reenactment. Um, all characters portrayed may be fictional. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Whatever South Park said. Are there any other big talking points from the lost episode that we should rehash here? Uh, I just want to say shout out again to all the people that donated because, uh, you know, they can't go back and re-listen to it to spruce up their day. Yeah, the guy who donated 20 bucks to make sure that I get a muffin, Aggie did make sure I got a muffin. That's right. I took one bite and said, this is disgusting, and <laughs> threw it out. I ate all the rest of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Gave it straight to Aggie. Listen, we don't got any diseases, you know, I'm going to eat what I pleases. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody thought that I looked 40 years old, so that's pretty good. And uh, that might be about it. Yeah, we got about one hour deep, so between the shout outs and those topics, I think that pretty much filled it up. Well, in the last week, we've been celebrating my birthday week, party hardy. We went to an epic rock concert, got pulled over by the police on the way home. You know, standard for Aggie and I. I think the second episode <laughs> of this podcast is also about getting pulled over by the police. That's right. It was on the right to celebrate in a traditional fashion for the program. Mm, I did uh, manage. This is the first time I've been pulled over by a cop for speeding, and I did manage to get out of it without a ticket. Maybe he saw in my ID that it was my birthday and he wanted to give me a pass. Very thankful that I refrained from drinking at all during the concert. I was sober dober, so this could have ended very tragically. Sure. If I was drunk driving, that would have been, uh, we'd probably be in prison right now. Who and knows? I do believe, uh, you know, I received about a complimentary $40 worth of beer, uh, which you wouldn't think would be too much, but I think it was about 64 ounces of beer uh, that I received complimentary style from our fellow concert goers. Uh, Patchy and Mrs. Patchy, some mm-hmm. big ups. So shout out to my brother and his wife for getting uh, Iggy fucking <laughs> liquored up and live, boy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, concert, do people want to hear my review of bands in a concert that they have probably never heard of and don't care about? Well, with myself being unfamiliar with the act, um, I thought it was magnificent. I really oh, had a wow. great time. I, you know, I feel like definitely an 8 plus out of 10, 8.5 out of 10. I mean, I really, I have nothing to complain about. It's just, um, you know, it's just a different scene from what I'm used to. So it's not, you know, it's very good for something that I wasn't very familiar with. Maybe if I'd really, you know, been taking it all to heart, it would have been a real 10 out of 10, but I would definitely would recommend the Dream Sonic Tour. If it comes to your town, you should definitely go. I'll give brief thoughts because I know nobody is going to give a fuck, but the three bands we got to see, the opening act was uh, Animals as Leaders. I don't think I've heard of them before. It's just straight up math, prog, metal, rock. There's no lyrics at all. It's just like very sophisticated uh, instrumental where the time signature is changing between every other minute. Uh, you know, it sounded fine to me. I didn't need a full hour of it, but it, it was good. I might go check them out at some point. Um, but really, for me, the star of the show was the middle act, Devin Townsend. I think he is the most charismatic and natural performer that was uh, on that stage that night. Uh, he reminded me a little bit of uh, Skip Schwink with the way he would talk to the audience and just the type of humor that he was into. So that was a little interesting. But. A lot of uh, concerts for me, the issue is when they clearly cannot perform up to the standard of the the albums, like the, the digital release and all that. And Devin Townsend, he's hitting every fucking note. Like he, it's just like you're listening to the CD. Uh, he's so talented. He can manipulate his voice and it sounds like three different people within a 10 second span. It's insane. Uh, and that leads me to the star of the show, Dream Theater and uh, their lead singer James Labrie. Let's just say uh, a little below my expectations there. 
And I, I do understand he perhaps had some vocal issues at one point in his life. Maybe he got like some sort of uh, throat surgery, I think. I, vocal cords got all fucked up from the high notes he's hitting. I don't really know the story. But it seemed like he was in physical pain to be performing at all. Uh-huh. Anytime he's not singing and there's like, you know, a three minute instrumental uh, interlude in the song, he'll just leave the stage, I assume, to go drink water or something. Between every other lyric, he's chugging water. So I, I think he wanted to be there and he's trying to have fun, not nearly having as much fun as Devin Townsend was. But. It, I felt bad. He looked like he was in physical pain to perform. <laughs> and all the best parts of the songs, when he's hitting those high notes and doing crazy, he basically gave up. Like, he would just speak the words instead of singing them. He would point the microphone at the audience and have them do it for him. Uh, he did not bring his A game. This might be the best he can do in his old age and with his fucked throat, but... Uh, in, during the finale, when Devin Townsend came out and started singing his songs for him, it was so much more <laughs> fucking keynote for me. Uh, again, you know, James Labrie, I love you, and you got me into Arion with your lead performance in The Human Equation. I was very happy that I got to hear The Count of Tuscany live. That's one of my favorite Dream Theater songs. But, uh, James, you know, take a break, man. Like, y- y- you're in a lot of pain, and, and I can sense it. You know, maybe uh, just let the band move on with uh, Devin Townsend. I don't know. Uh, did you get that impression that the lead singer was kind of not giving his all? Well, I didn't really know these songs, so uh, you know, when he was kind of leaving for these instrument- instrumental breaks, uh, I didn't really think too much of it at the time. So I think that would have been lost on me since I'm not a regular listener of the uh, act. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, Devin Townsend, though, he was a. Uh, he was a, definitely a, a big star. He's he was, the star of the show, for yeah. sure. I, and I think, I don't remember, I'm pretty sure he was also at the Avantasia concert I went to with the Bigs a few years ago, but that's my faulty memory. But and I did like, um, I'll say with Dream Theater, when they're performing, they had like uh, you know a, a screen in the background with graphics. I felt like the ambiance of the uh, digital graphic matter combined with the sonic... Uh, tone of that of each song, I felt like it all meshed very well. It definitely fit whatever they're performing and whatever was being shown on that on the digital uh, graphics. I feel like it all came together well. But yeah, Devin Townsend, he definitely was uh, a cut above with his with his personality. You know, mm-hmm. even all the music was very good. I liked all of it, but his personality and uh, his working with the audience uh, a little bit more, I, I feel like that shown through for sure. All right, so the concert, hella fucking epic, as the kids might say. The drive home was going 78 and a 65, in oh. one in the morning. See, I thought that's a 70 mile an hour. It, I guess that we were in a 65 zone in Iowa. So it's so fucked. Like every fucking eight miles, seven of those miles is gonna be road work construction. So thank fucking god, I the, I get pulled over in the <laughs> one little pocket of space where it's not road work. Otherwise, probably would have been facing a big fine. Uh, but cop was clearly younger than all of us. <laughs> so, you know, maybe he was intimidated by Aggie's drunken alpha energy, half asleep yeah. in the back of the car. It kind of uh, resembled like a 14-year-old beagle, you know, mm-hmm. like how it takes something really shocking for it to raise up like the one eye and maybe kind of like slightly tilt its head around. That's what me passed out in the back seat looked like. <laughs> Uh, did I? Were you asleep? And I woke up saying, "Aggie, sorry, I got us pulled over." Or what was your experience with the uh, the cop? Uh, I feel like I was kind of going back and forth, but kind of like it. Eh. I'm just very much. Anytime like I'm in a car, or anytime I fly, or if I'm on a bus, whatever. I don't know what it is. I just. Uh, it's like when I was a kid in school. Um, every I rode the bus to school, and I would get on the school bus. And I would just sleep for like the 20 minutes and then get right up and <laughs> every single day. But then I was also up until like 3 a.m. every morning. But either way, uh, I believe I kind of got uh, startled by the uh, lights of the police vehicle before I kind of had a full grasp of what was going on at, the, at that time. Were you getting Vietnam flashbacks to all the other times <laughs> police have tried to stop your fun? I, not so much, just because um, I wasn't driving, you know. I hate getting, I'm very, uh, it's not very fun. I haven't got pulled over uh, since I've had my new car, though, so that's pretty good. That's, like, at least, like, three or four months that I've been pulled over, which for me is probably a record. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, hey, shout out to that cop for not giving me a $500 fine on my birthday when I was just trying to get his home safely and there's no other cars on the road, so why the fuck can't I go 80 miles an hour on the fucking highway, but... 
You know, it is what it is. We eventually got home anyway. Uh, and then yesterday, we spent the entire day at the Adventureland a theme amusement park, riding roller coasters nonstop, waiting in long lines with the blaring heat of the sun being blocked out by the blaring smoke of the Canadian wildfires. Mm -hmm. So, you know, low air quality and uh, high heat all day. Uh, what'd you think of Adventureland Amusement Park, Iggy? Well, I had a great time. Yeah, I, you know, not sure what to expect. You know, I'm from Minnesota my whole life growing up. Uh, you know, the one place that we'd get to go to every couple years or whatever was Valley Fair. And Valley Fair is always was always a, a treat. Uh, you know, was no Disney World or whatever. I mean, uh, Disney probably sucks now, but you know, 20 years ago it was no Disney World, but uh, definitely still brought all the action. And I feel like Adventureland, a very well-rounded experience. They had a lot going on. They didn't have any fried butter on a stick, but they did have some damn good cheese curds, and for a shockingly valuable price. True. And uh, you know, this cup right here was full of I think. Three frozen Jack and Cokes. <laughs> total came to uh, under fifty dollars total. I even tipped the girl. Wow! On one of the, re on one of the refills. Not that you I'm shouldn't gonna... have, because you had to wait t two minutes for her to <laughs> no. stop fucking texting on her phone. I could tell that she hated her life and that she probably was gonna g uh, have a drug addiction. You know, with, she's probably miserable. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> you know, she's a she's a victim of this so-called society. And when I did tip her that two dollars on my like twelve dollar drink, uh, she did noticeably perk up more so than she had before so it is what it is you know i've got a lot of tips online for doing what i do so i'm passing the buck along mm -hmm. to a young person they're going to change the world for the better and furthermore she was not ugly therefore you know you know gotta gotta and she uh, was serving alcohol so you know yeah, she's of age you gotta support uh what you want to see in the world i want to see women who aren't ugly serving <laughs> me alcohol so you know you gotta you gotta put your dollar behind what you believe in and that's how i feel all right, so we recapped the Lost Media episode of this show. We recapped my birthday escapades. Is there anything else from this week we're missing, or should we move on to what we're going to be doing next week? Well, I mean, do we want to touch lightly on our viewing of a new program that released today? Oh, that's right. We should, yeah. I think we teased that at the beginning. Uh, Aggy was featured in a brand new King Cobra JFS documentary, two and a half hours up on YouTube. By the time this is up, who knows if it'll still be up. There are a lot of glaring uh, technical issues in the second half of the film. But a certain channel called Your Favorite Son went to King Cobra's house and filmed with him for about a week and made this little documentary documentary about it and uh, we just spent our morning watching it before this podcast so i guess it's fresh in our minds for a review mm -hmm. uh eggy how did you get involved in this project for the, i guess the brief interview that you were in well your favorite son he came around to i think i found his channel first um because at some point maybe earlier this year uh during the winter months when everything was very slow for me and i wasn't i didn't stream for like two or three months because i was kind of just burnt out on it all that i was doing my wagey thing on my days off i would sit and lay in bed with my laptop and play like old video games and i would have uh youtube on my tv just going through like random video games i watched like triple jump uh game sack but it would auto play random stuff and um it auto played one of his documentaries one time that he did and i uh, found it a very good documentary he's very into silent hill uh, so I subscribed after that. So uh, then I found out, so I'm a fan of the uh, Million Dollar Extreme. You know, I've been following them for uh, over 10 years at this point, over 11 years actually at this point. Um, and I noticed he commented on one of their videos that they had. So then I was like, oh, hey, you know, cool. Uh, so then uh, I, th I can't remember exactly which stream it was, but he came into my stream one night and he was talking in the chat. And all I remember is I, it was a really messed up stream. I got like way messed up. It might have been Valentine's <laughs> It could have been maybe. any given stream. Yeah, literally any of them. <laughs> um, but so I got kind of, you know, connected with him in that way. And so then we uh, started following each other on Instagram. And he said, oh, I want to go meet up with Cobra. Do you want to like chip in a, your two cents, how you feel about him? So we did a little Discord call after that. Uh, so yeah, that's how basically I got involved. Just kind of I uh, watched one of his videos. Oh, it's pretty cool. Subscribed. Oh, hey, commented on a video that I liked that he liked too. Uh, then he came up to my channel, said what was going on, and uh, yeah. So that's pretty much how it all went down. And there was a belief that he might have, in your final departing words of the documentary, mm -hmm. uh, might have cut off your final thought in a way that might be a little misleading or not really getting the full picture. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to clarify for those who have already watched this? 
Well, um, yeah, I feel like, as we mentioned just a moment prior, there were some seeming technical difficulties in the upload. Uh, so if there is a re-upload or some type of thing along those lines, it might uh, figure it out. But yeah, essentially he had a portion at the end of the uh, piece where he had had a few people that he'd uh, had little bits of their Discord call or whatever throughout the film to accentuate certain points. And he had a little piece at the end, just a little sliver of, you know, why do you think we watch him? And at this point I said, well, back a few years ago, he had those big moments, those real, you know, standout moments, but he also had hundreds of uploads. He'd upload every single day talking about the news or whatever, so it was just that little bit of, you know, memorable time in a large portion of not as memorable times versus, you know, in the last couple of years when the, some of these clips and quips have been doing the rounds on TikTok, Instagram, been being shouted out by some larger podcasters, larger YouTubers, uh, these things have gained traction to bring in a new audience who is finding themselves more engaged because Cobra has been getting more drunk and kind of getting a little wilder, whereas those wild moments were a little more few and far between th for the first several years. Uh, so he didn't, whatever the problem was with the audio, didn't give that full context to my feeling on why there might be a more engaged audience now. Because he had his YouTube channel for several years, and I think he just had broken through, I think, 7,000, 7 or 8,000 just in 2019, I believe, on the subscribers. So he had several years where nobody was so interested. He had, a, he had his loyal following, but... It didn't have that larger appeal that kind of the wilder, drunk wildness has had to a larger audience. And then also, I just, I actually commented this on the video because I also had something that I was gonna, I thought about saying sort of after the fact, but we never had another call, was that for somebody like myself or Cobra, you know, we have this upbringing, these adolescent years that are sort of uh, aimless, we're not all that. We're not a big social star. Uh, we're not really the best students. We don't really have the brightest future or the most opportunity available to us. But when we're able to find this little character, this little niche, this little something or other, um, after we poke around online, that we can, you know, really meld and become one with that character as our and our real selves, and sort of uh, makes us feel like we've got a new coat of paint, feels like we've got something a little bit more meaningful to work with in our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, somebody, something that we could be recognized for uh, that we didn't have going for us without this platform, so. So you think you might have cut that all down for brevity, maybe? Yeah, well, see, and part of that I didn't mention to him, there was a lot that was kind of that I felt like wasn't substantial, but the point of sort of melding with your online visage to add meaning to your life, I never really got that point out when we had the call. And then also, yeah, just the full context, I can't remember what point he even cut it off at, but context of the old humdrum with the diamonds in the rough versus, you know, just the getting plastered and mm -hmm. talking about wild stuff by yourself without your friends coming around. Well, I guess we can uh, give our brief review of this documentary now that we've wasted two and a half hours watching it. <laughs> and as far as the technical issues that we're discussing, the entire second half of this two and a half hour movie is the audio is not synced up to the visuals. It's about seven or eight seconds off, depending on the scene. <coughs> Uh, and I'm just wondering, do these motherfuckers, like, am I the only person on earth who watches their own video before it goes public to an audience of thousands? Like, is your own video so long and boring, even you, <laughs> favorite son, couldn't be bothered to fucking proofread it? Like, it, if these people tried to write a book, it's just gonna be a nightmare. Like, having to reread an entire fucking book to check for mistakes. You can't even be bothered to watch your own YouTube video before you hit public. Like, what are these people thinking? What, this makes me genuinely mad, because I try to craft the best product possible for people to enjoy, and then we see people who just, like, don't give a single fuck. Was it really just his own video was so boring he couldn't be bothered to watch it? Well, I know from having watched these video game documentaries, I mean, they're, they're actually succinct for what they are, but they're also going to be the entire history of an entire video game franchise. So he does regularly many hours in a video. Um, 
and that I'm not sure if that was a an intentional choice to sort of keep that's what he's used to uh, it was not in my opinion really the right move uh, for how this documentary was presented I think possibly what would have been you could have had because it, it, it was very much a sort of vlog featuring Cobra with his perspective on things I feel like with that format I could have done very well if it was broken into maybe like weekly 30 minute releases um, I feel like it wouldn't maybe have been too much people would have known what to expect that it was gonna be a little bit more centered on the document tour and his experiences versus the documentee um, yeah, your favorite son made himself the main character of his King Cobra documentary and really wanted us, wanted us to uh, know every detail of what it was like trying to contact him to make the documentary and, and waiting outside of his house and driving there. Just stuff that I think a more seasoned filmmaker would know to cut out and keep the subject of the documentary the focus and the star of the show. Uh, I uh, maybe this is like the iDubs effect or something where they think okay I'm the YouTuber I'm the interviewer I need to be on camera the whole time uh, if you watch like a real documentary usually there's not even a camera on the interviewer it's just always on the subject <coughs> uh, so you know, minor critiques for your favorite son next time you try to latch onto a lol cow that you're a fan of uh, make him the star of the show and not yourself because I mean I don't know you but you really weren't that interesting to be on camera the whole time. Yeah, I feel like um, with the I dubs or uh, who's the other guy, that British guy, what's his name? Uh, not Stephen Colbert. Uh, he looks like Stephen Colbert. Louis, Louis, what's his name? I, I haven't watched them. I don't know. Whoever the guy is, the one who did the uh, one that comes to mind recently, did the one uh, documentary on like Nick Fuentes and uh, Beards and Beardley and those guys. I forget what his name is. Um, he's done a lot of those British documentaries. He did the one with the autistic kid who was like beating up the pillows or whatever. Louis something. I don't know. He's, he's, he doesn't really matter. He's pretty irrelevant. But his documentaries also always like feature him in the frame. But uh, the editing with those projects is also just a lot more, a lot more neat, a lot more clean to uh, accommodate that. Um, you know. So I think if this was a thirty-minute documentary with sort of you know those certain parts where it was necessary like the interview portion which is desynced the interview portion where you're there in the room with them that was an all right insertion but it's just a lot of you know filming and then cuts to him you know sitting at home and kind of going over which i feel like is more idubs centric for those recent documentaries that idubs had produced uh you wouldn't see that in the british gentleman who i'm uh, referring to whose name i can't remember but yeah, I feel like uh, two things. Yeah, it could have been a little bit neater with the editing, cut out a little bit more that didn't really, you know. I could cut this thing in half and it would be a much better film. Or that, or if it's going to be st style it as the, like, you know, a day with part one, you know, uh, and break it up into some increments, release it like that. Uh, and then you might have had a bit more retention. Uh, you know, it could have done a little more for the channel. That's just a couple pointers on my part but i was still happy to give my thoughts for the production and uh, i appreciate being credited for my contribution so thank you for that and again just to reiterate do us all a favor and watch your own fucking video to make sure there are no processing issues again uh, imagine like fucking like christopher nolan it doesn't even bother to watch oppenheimer like no i'm sure it's fine put it in yeah. theaters i don't me i if i'm doing like a five minute upload i'll usually probably watch it about 20 times <laughs> yeah for saying, real I don't, I don't want to yeah. sound narcissistic no anything, you gotta but... make sure it's a good product I, <laughs> yeah. every video i upload i watch probably 10 times and then as soon as it's public i'll probably never watch it again i've seen it enough i've just spent a whole week living this exact 10 minute video over and over mm -hmm. again i'm done with it uh, but clearly he was not passionate enough to watch his own work and i find it shameful uh any final thoughts on this documentary I feel like I've spoken my piece. Okay. Uh, well, that's uh, Monkey and Aggie past. Let's take a look at Monkey and Aggie future because we're review or we're recording this about a week before it comes out, maybe uh, ten days or so. But the day after this podcast airs, Aggie and I will be on the battlefield on a little war called the Forty Eight Hour Film Festival Contest. 
and uh, we will be making an entire short film in a 48 hour period. If you don't know how that works, we go to the kickoff event and they give us our special genre and say you have to make it your film in this genre and they give you a piece of dialogue and a character name and then really you just go do whatever you want with all those things. Uh, kind of similar to the short film contests I've held on my channels in the past years, but I give you guys a lot more than a weekend to do it. And on their website, they list out all the possible genres you could draw. And if you remember my old video from the first time I did this contest, uh, we had to do a film a day femme, which basically just means a feminist film, uh, which we were kind of fucked because we, we did not really have very many women available on the team. But so, thankfully, in 2023, we've got more genres of women for this genre of film. <laughs> yeah, so Aggie could play a trans woman, and I'm sure it would be fine. But I thought it would be helpful for us and maybe halfway entertaining for the audience for us to go through the list of genres and if there's one that we're not super comfortable with or we think we might struggle with, maybe now would be a good time to brainstorm what are some possible short film ideas that we could do for that genre. And for ones that are easy, like uh, the first ones are comedy and dark comedy, uh, I mean, that's our bread and butter. I don't think we really need to elaborate too much on that. You know, we're comfortable in those spaces. Yeah. So uh, to skip those two, next is a detective slash cop. I don't remember, is that... Is that the genre I drew when we did uh, Snap Crackle Cop? I don't even know, but uh, we've done well, a cop film in the know, past. It's a good thing we're, we recently were spending some time watching this channel, Anxiety War. Mm -hmm. I think maybe we could lift some tips. You could be uh, Officer Chud and come for the sicko. Uh, Ooh, could, yeah, we could do a <laughs> pedo hunter movie. That'll you, play great for the audience. Man? Yeah, you all, I mean, look, I mean, listen, I'm not trying to, some people say I look a little strange. Let's go rent a U-Haul oh, no, van no. and hang up free candy on the side. Hey, I'll drive it around. Hey, just to be clear. Okay. Uh, I invited Kino Corner to come. He okay. said no. Mm. I invited Low Res. He can't make it. Mm. I, I invited them because they are accomplished directors. They know how to frame a shot, do the cinematography. They know how to direct a film. Uh, that's not my strength in life. But now that they are not coming, basically, I'm just leaving it all to me. Uh, I, I'm hopefully not going to be in the film too much. Okay. And this is my roundabout way of saying, Aggie, you're going to be the star of the film <laughs> no matter which genre we draw. So if we draw a cop film, you're playing the cop. There's, I'm not going to have you play the pedo. Uh, e. Rich and Biggs will be here, so one of them can play the, the okay. predator. Uh, so <laughs> don't you worry about that. But, uh, uh, okay. but I, I will be much more comfortable if I'm always behind the camera uh, since I don't have a professional who knows what they're doing. Because once I'm in the editing bay, on Sunday and I only have three hours to submit and it's just all these all disgusting the... horrible shots that whoever I put behind the camera did not know what they were doing that's I, a fair point we will be fucked so I I will probably be the cinematographer and director and, and writer for most of this shit but uh you know that's fine next genre drama I'm sure we could easily do a drama I mean that's basically anything to do with mental illness and that's also our bread and butter right, how about this get this an alcoholic who's trying to make it on YouTube, but he just can't seem to figure it out. We can even do a real go live situation, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just go live for like, you know, 30 minutes or whatever to uh, get some good shots. Maybe just pound a couple real shots and then, you know, just... I go on a total breakdown, you know, and then go jump in on the couch or I don't know. We could get you drunken and disorderly in public and then when you're getting arrested by the police and I'm filming the whole thing, they'll think it's just part of the movie. <laughs> uh, you know what, they're, they're local uh, actors. I mean, local, uh, you know, so it's a local situation so we're not taking from, you know, we're not breaking the rules for the festival. Right, it's all going to be in the state of Iowa. Uh, I also wanted us to discuss some of the strengths and um, just things that we are naturally already gifted at that we could possibly incorporate into the film. So I was thinking maybe your character could end up being a rapper and there could be some sort of original song featured okay, in the movie. Sure. That always plays great for the 48-hour film audience. So if it's a drama, maybe it's uh, you know down on his luck rap star who's trying to get back on tour or something like that. Get a like boozy set beat. <laughs> I'm trying to be a live streamer. Well, that's my dream, but man, they keep on just creaming me. Susan me scheming, yeah, she trying to take me off my pivot. But I'm just living, boy, I'm trying to get this paper, man. But I can't get it. That's how I'm living. Anyways, hey, the film's thoughts. already half written, it sounds like. <laughs> uh, next genre, fantasy. Ooh, okay. You ever heard of something called her? You know, I have, uh, I could get a blow up doll. Is that with it? You know, that's do a little I more sci fi, isn't it? <laughs> 
fantasy, I, I my mind jumps to like Fan- me- medieval times, Lord oh, okay. of the Rings type of fantasy. I'm thinking that it would be a fantasy for me to, you know, get some. To so. get a girlfriend. <laughs> we have enough time to order an anime body pillow. If we are. I guess that's more reality. <laughs> yeah, true. If we get fantasy. Mm. Are we going to be inspired by the likes of Matt Provincial and uh, the stupid Mario Brothers and just be running around in the woods in shitty cheap costumes with fake swords? Because that, I don't know, it seems pretty horrible to me. Is there well, any better idea for fantasy? How about we we'll go back to medieval times? We need to figure out some kind of food that got invented in like 17, uh, 1500, okay? Well, it's I'm a gonna, fantasy. I'll... We can make up anything we want. I know. <clears throat> So, we're gonna find out some kind of food that got invented in like 15. I'm gonna wear a full twill in like a burlap sack. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna rub dirt all over my face. I won't bathe for like a week just to get. <laughs> I, can, I can bathe like the day of. Once, once we draw it, then I'll, I'll like. We can shower. easily dirty you up. You don't gotta show up to the kickoff event <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> but, anyways, it could be like a uh, maybe a magical wizard. Played by yeah, you should play a wizard. That'd be cool. <laughs> okay, so Biggs is gonna. Well, I don't know. He might not pass. He, he might look like more like the king because he's well fed. Mm-hmm. Erich could be the peasant. Oh, we do have the crowns. Wizard. Yeah, so Erich is gonna be the peasant, and I'm gonna be the magic wizard that teaches him how to make like corn cob pie or something or whatever they ate back then. And I, I think if King Biggs. Oh, I just don't know why I haven't been able to find any delicious foods. Like everything I eat, it just goes right to my stomach with no flavor. I just don't understand it. The knee rich is all dirty. Oh my lord, I've created the dankest pie combination. And I'm over there in my wizard robe. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. May the gods bless this concoction with most deliciousness. <laughs> Lightning, green screen. <laughs> Peasant, provide me this dish, for if the flavor is not most gratuitous, your lineage shall be destroyed. And Biggs it, takes one bite and he goes, oh, it's good, Kingdom Tube. Oh. Well, how about this? I like this idea of you got this arrogant, uh, evil king who wants the most delicious uh, food hack of all time, maybe even a drink combo. <coughs> uh, if it's an adventure, or it's fantasy, it should be some sort of epic adventure where the brave hero has to go on a quest to find like these special ingredients to create. Wendy's chili buried underground. <laughs> well, well, it's, I mean, I don't know. It's fantasy, so we'll have to come up with like Eye of Newt and all that, okay, you know, right, right. that lame shit. But uh, perhaps the character is going on an epic quest to find the ingredients to satiate the king, and then if he fails at the end, he gets killed or whatever. That might be more of a narrative we could do instead of, <laughs> you know, not having a story at all. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think we got something here. And you can still be the wizard because there's always the wizard who joins the the party quest to go with the you know the Hobbit or whatever the fuck is going on. So I'll get a big staff ahead of time just in mm-hmm. case because we can use it for like kung fu if it's not for magic. Speaking of which, did we ever get you an Elvis? costume no uh, well we have two weeks until this contest maybe there's a chance you could actually play elvis in a movie just like austin butler did magic elvis and fantasy or detective elvis <laughs> <laughs> i think we can plug elvis into most of these genres uh, he's got the name recognition i think that the average uh viewer of the results might you know appreciate something that they're aware of mm-hmm Okay, we got Fantasy Down. Next is Film Day Femme. What is our feminist film? Uh, I did contact my uh, high school improv partner, who is a woman, and she is probably going to join us to be an actress. So we have access to a real woman, but would you be interested in playing a transgender woman for the Film Day Femme? Listen, Dave Chappelle told me, he said, don't put on the dress. Yeah, don't. Yeah, okay, that's but fine. You don't to, have to. To film, you know, to win a uh, regional film festival award. <laughs> we're not going to win, dude. So, basically, <laughs> right, here we go. So, we're going to still get the real woman in it. It's going to be, um, you know, we're down and out. We're, f- we're street walkers in Vegas. We're from the okay. hood. Okay. We come from an abusive background, you know, we could have some scenes where we're, you know, at the makeup mirror crying and, uh, you know, it's it's all, like, disorganized. But then we get the letter that uh, B-I-double-G, Biggs Bigelow, he's got the <laughs> twerkathon, twerk fest, top oh, twerker, God. wins big money, and so, uh, you know, we end up, uh, <clears throat> but, tragic accident, a drunk driver, E. Rich McCoy, oh. he hits... 
the twerk bus on the way to the twerk a and and uh, all but two of the beautiful women on board um, are hospitalized with non-life-threatening injuries, but their BBLs are deflated. They can't work. <laughs> so two beautiful, natural, brave, and stunning women, me and whatever her face is, you know, we have to go out for gold. And, uh, you know, we see beautiful, stunning female empowerment on the dance floor, courtesy of Big's Big Low Dance Club. That is true. These days, the definition of feminism is I'm allowed to be a whore in public and you can't stop me. So right. I, I think it'll fit the theme perfect. Uh, what we did last time was it was just uh, a post-apocalyptic world and uh, the the female character was like the Once heroine. all men are killed and finally one woman can win? No, no, no. I'm talking about the one we, when we did film they filmed before. Uh-huh. Like it, she was, you know, she led her merry band against the trash goons uh, who were just like the villainous characters. And I don't really know if that fit the definition of film they found. It was more of just one of these characters happens to be a female. So I'm glad that you're actually incorporating the tenets of femininity into this, where it's just twerking and being a whore. I think it'll work out. I well, you know what? If this completely stranger woman that I've never met has, um, you know, low enough uh, self-respect to get on camera and start twerking for a, a 48-hour film festival award. I'll have enough self-disrespect to also join her. <laughs> uh, Listen, you know what? <laughs> I will say she does have an OnlyFans where she does oh! she, and she does okay. post her nude body on Twitter. Well, so shit. Okay. <laughs> she might uh, be getting, willing. Okay, it sounds like she's the perfect fit for that mm-hmm. particular scene that I'm glad we just brainstormed. That. Yeah. Okay, next genre is fish out of water. Hmm. Okay. I've not okay, so thought about this, this at all. You heard about Freaky Friday, right? Of course. How about uh, you want to trade bodies, like body swap movie? No, Chudley Chad Day. Okay, we can bring the what's her name in on this too. So, um, you know, I go I, Chudley I go. Chad Day. <laughs> <laughs> Hear me out. So I go, I'm like, you know, I'm in front of my computer. I'm on like 4chan. I'm like, oh, women, they make me so mad. Oh God. Okay. I'm never gonna get. No woman's ever gonna kiss me in my whole and life. We can literally film that right here at this computer setup. It's perfect. Yeah, L- this like looks like, big, like an incels room. <laughs> some big MS Paint like ch- chud like stretched out on one. Like, oh, these women make me so mad. Okay. And then uh, all of a sudden I wake up and I'm like, and then uh, I don't know, we'll figure this out. I'm gonna bump my head in the ceiling somehow. Like, wait a minute, I'm not five foot three anymore. What's going on? I don't understand. This doesn't need to have any continuity past that one portion. But hmm. then what's her name? I mean, listen, it sounds like she's already uh, whatever for pay anyway. So basically, you know, just I'll cut her a little extra, and uh, all of a sudden she's. I mean, I'm, we're not making some adult film here, but uh, you know, just um, whatever. You know, we're gonna find little quirks. Now this might be a little too uh, new wave for the film festival audience. I'm not gonna lie, but fish out of water. You know, Chad out of virgin. You remember Freaky or what's that name? Uh, what's Horny Hal? What's the one with Sneaky? Shallow Hal. Shallow Hal. Yeah. So basically, take the shallow hell concept, except instead of fatty versus skinny, it's beta versus Chad. Okay. Do we have an actual Chad alpha male who can like body swap with you in the movie? Thanks. <laughs> Uh, I'm starting to think that other than me, every single person showing up is a little obese. So. Uh. <clears> hmm. <throat> we'll do like I said. We'll do the camera tricks. You know, I'll just uh, you know. I like the idea of uh, the Freaky Friday of a body swap and then somebody who's in a, you know, completely, that's that's really fish out of water, right? Because then they have to go about their life, I guess, in the body of somebody else, maybe. I don't know, that's kind of tricky. Yeah. I mean, really, fish out of water would be me showing up to... You know, like everybody is fat other than me. Like this could be like the like America 2050. Every single person is fat, but like this is like this is considered the standard of beauty. And like I'm getting bullied and picked on for being uh, of a, a common Anorexic. size. Yeah. yeah, and like I'm just constantly getting bullied. That could be the fish out of water. Some good social satire and commentary there, making fun of those fat fatties. Uh, I'm sure the commenters on this uh, podcast will have some more great Chudley Chad Day. Uh, you know, uh, I feel like there's a strong. Well, that might be able to fit into a lot of these other genres too. So maybe we should go quicker. We are kind of running out of time. Yeah. Uh, horror. What's the horror movie? I always wanted to have Aggie be like a Michael Myers type, just like a stone cold killer uh, freakazoid who everybody's terrified of. Do you like that idea? That's good. Um, another possibility is, um, you know. Uh, Cobra Kruger. Okay, hold on. You know, it sounds like it's completely derivative, but it is. Furthermore, uh, you wake up and 
you trans I don't know <laughs> some something happens and you're transported to a different dimension where all your uh, food is is roach Ritos and bug infested combos. Okay. Uh, okay, that's a little derivative that might not go anywhere, but uh, something for the, be on the table anyway. Uh, mockumentary, that's also my bread and butter. That's so easy to do. A million ideas for that. Musical, uh, I would be hype as fuck if we drew musical. Most people are hoping and praying they don't get that one. We have genuine talent here with Aggie. He has performed at concerts in you know venues all the time. Uh, I right. would love to make even a mockumentary musical about just the life maybe of this I up should, and coming uh, rapper. Maybe I, or that, or I should finish my uh, goth album and we could have that as an OST. We oh, yeah. sell CDs of it on the side after the, at the showing or whatever. Yeah, you're not allowed to use pub or non-public domain Fed music. Post redacted. Ooh. I thought you loved me, but you have just acted. Fed post redacted. I'm gonna kill all of your family. Kill all of your family. Ooh. And we should also have the Elvis costume ready, just in case we decide to take the Elvis musical route <laughs> instead of the uh, the rapping hey, documentary. Hey, you know, all I'm saying is my stream viewers can attest these hips know how to gyrate. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and you could easily play like Elvis in his 40s or you know, <laughs> like on his last days. I think it would fit. Uh, romance. This is a tricky one because I I don't know how ironic they expect us to be, but I. I feel like a genuine romantic film is not something I have inside of me to create. Uh, uh, the ladies know about this about me. You know, I'm uh, basically a dyed-in-the-wool romantic. I, I'm actually part French. This is actually really good. You're 80% my... French? Uh, I got that, uh, you know, once upon a time, the uh, Native American part of my family uh, met up with those French-Canadian fur traders and got busy. So I do got French lineage. I speak the language of love. I think if we have at least one human alive of age consenting non-related female in the, you know, we could definitely do a when Harry met Sally, except it's when a Harry man. When Chudley met, met Soy Jack. <laughs> <laughs> when Chudley met Femcell. <laughs> yeah, that that would be a good one. Like an I incel mean, and a femcell, and it's, it focuses on each of their lives and how miserable and, and dejected they are, and then they find each other. Unironic, absolute, uh, generation defining Kino if we both just mm -hmm. actually keep it real and I keep it real with my back story she keeps it real with the adult stuff she's doing well I, I, we doesn't have to be true to the actors real lives I mean we I'm sure that we can craft our own okay, characters well, and narrative out of it but <coughs> that's a great idea fem cell and incel fall in love and then maybe it ends with them like doing a mass shooting together because <laughs> that's, that's romantic as fuck to be honest if we're being perfectly clear romance just means two people falling in love and having a love story right yeah is there like some good uh, I don't know. I was kind of landlocked, but I, you know, a nice romantic little boat ride. I just don't know if there's anything around here that fits that bill. I don't have a boat. I just so. mean, like, you know, I've, uh, I've rent, you know, there's, we'll look into it. We'll find, you know, something. If, if, if that's what we draw, you know, I'm sure we'll find a nice, the right romantic setting within a reasonable distance to uh, bring it all together. Well, for an incel romance, how romantic of a setting do you need? Like, if anything, it might just be. A chat room or something i don't know <laughs> but uh, that's a good idea i like incel meets femcel uh sci-fi film you mentioned the movie her you want to fall in love with your phone aggy <coughs> you get down with that yeah and that, that's probably a good reason for me to get it I, I think they've done phone. that before i think that movie's been made uh <laughs> But sci-fi, I love sci-fi because that means time travel, uh, anything with a robot or a cyborg. I would love to make a time travel movie, Aggy. I think we could have we going ideas forwards popping. or backwards in time. Doesn't even matter. I, but I think <laughs> you know, as soon as we lock in on time travel, we can write some real kino. I'm just trying to have uh, brief ideas for most of these. Uh, silent film. Oh, uh, that's my bread and butter right there. I'm a vaudeville champion, expertise. I've studied all the greats. You really, you've watched a lot of like Charlie Chaplin movies and stuff? Because I've actually, that's a big blind spot in my film history. I yeah. haven't really watched the silent well, you, film. They got a lot of uh, vaudeville that's past the copyright expiration. We go out and watch some vaudeville on uh, YouTube tonight after we, okay. at some point, possibly. But uh, I mean, yeah, it's, I really enjoy it because, uh, you know, the talkies, people, they kind of, <clears throat> it went from the greater theater to, to it reduced it to the actor in my opinion versus the greater theater there was a lot more the actors still pulled their weight but you had the grand scores and the the uh, 
the setting, the, the stages, I feel like it took a little bit more, in my personal opinion. You know, obviously we've done great things since, but I'm a big vaudeville fan. It was basically the exact opposite of the movies being made today, where everything is a, a visual effect and CGI, okay, and they're exactly. not—they're not crafting anything there in person to be in the frame of the camera. It's all just done in post. Uh, I know a lot of silent films, and uh, I think we saw a few of these last time I did 48 Hour Film. They'll do the thing where, like, it's in black and white, and the characters are like talking, and then it'll show their dialogue as words on screen. <coughs> I never really liked that. I think. Could we craft a five-minute narrative that does not need any dialogue at all, and it's all just in the the visual performance yeah. and the facial expressions of the actors? Bring it back to uh, the French standard. You know, they were uh, doing vaudeville that was all purely emotional. Yeah, there was no uh, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. You know, it was all just emoted. Uh, the score, I think, is going to be a tough part for that because I don't know if any of us have the uh, have orchest orchestral abilities, well, I, but I'm sure we could. I, I, even just a simple piano score would probably I, suffice. I would imagine the music from Charlie Chaplin movies is now literally public domain. I mean, it's been 100 years, right? So okay, we okay, could true. probably just pull from the greats. As far as the required line of dialogue, uh, maybe it'll have to be like a trick, like it's written on a piece of paper at some point in the movie or something. Rosebud. Yeah, it just we'll have to get very creative with the visual storytelling, which I think would be a good exercise for my uh, directing brain, because I usually I am very dependent on the dialogue as opposed to what is the camera telling us about what's happening. Right. Uh, thriller slash suspense. Uh, that's basically the same as horror, really. Yeah, or drama and horror, a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. And I think we already covered that. Uh, Western. We do not have any cowboy hats or westerny costumes, so we might be fucked if we get that. But I guess it could be a modern western where they're not really wearing the get-ups and riding horses and stuff. Cocaine cowboy? I'm not familiar. What's the story there? Oh, uh, it's basically just, uh, <clears throat> generally speaking, uh, sort of the outlaws of the drug trade. Really, the the base. Well, and you know, with the locale, we can't expect anybody to be so true to form with the western. Mm. Well, we were watching a video of top five ghost towns in Iowa, mm. so maybe we could travel to one of these abandoned places. Uh, but I, I think the essence of a western is just like a lone hero who encounters a problem somebody else is having, like a city under siege or being run by bandits, and then he saves the day and yeah. rides off into the sunset. I, I'm sure we could come up with a modern take on that story. I'm a little bit of the uh, anti-hero, you know, I'm walking around and I'm like, you know, <sighs> got a little bit of that taxi driver energy, a little bit of anti-social mm -hmm. energy, but then I see uh, the... Oil Baron's daughter, what's her face, getting kidnapped by uh, Baron Biggs, <laughs> and he says, uh, you know, <clears throat> five paces at dusk, or you know, you'll never see her again. And I say, well, well, I feel like that's. Aren't we going I'm a little bit into turn this on myself with how sick I am of this so-called society? But yeah, I was gonna I'll say, I, I feel like uh, I want us to avoid too many cliches, mm. and uh, you know, like you know, ten paces at dawn or whatever. <laughs> this sounds too. It's not big enough for the two of us. <laughs> I would like to avoid big enough for our combined BMI. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess if we're like gonna do like a joke play on those tropes. That'd be fine, but uh, hopefully we avoid oh. all cliches in our films. Yeah, we could do like a Monty Python cowboy type thing. Mm -hmm. It's just like a big parody, sort of. Okay, there's, so there's, there's a lot of westerns on the books to uh, take from. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. Blazing Saddles, but you know, is is kind of the definitive. You just want to but... say the N word over and over again? <laughs> That'd be good. <laughs> like, oh, what? So they can? Mel Brooks can do it? That's right. <laughs> okay, uh, that's half of them. And now the second half is when it gets a little uh, more experimental with the concept of a genre. Okay. Uh, there's something called buddy film. Oh, that's perfect. Me and Biggs, the ton of terror, or the ton of. True friendship. I'm and that could also just be like buddy cop. and So any cop ideas could also play into that one. Mm -hmm. uh, but buddy film, what is the plot of a buddy film? Could it be two two friends and uh, now this woman comes in the picture, they both have feelings and then you know a little bit of competition. Ultimately, they realize their friendship is more valuable than that whore. <laughs> yeah. uh, something like that. shows up and she's I really love really fat men. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, as long as the, the message at the end is the buddy's friendship is more important than everything else, I That's think right. it'll work. Okay. That's a good idea. Now here's a big issue, a glaring issue, uh, it's called climate film. 
they expect somebody, their entire film, to have the genre of climate. <coughs> All right. What did they mean by this? I don't know. So, we're going to have a protagonist and an antagonist. The the protagonist is obviously, uh, what's that guy, Captain Planet? We're going okay. to rip him off somehow. We're going to derivative, be a derivative of him. Uh, so we're gonna take fake oil and be pouring it down your kitchen sink. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me like whoever. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna be around to see it. Glug, glug, glug. And then whoever. No, no. Think about the sea turtles. Think about the dolphins. Well, you know, I read in this. Just I don't know, put more fake something in uh, thick water or something. Just, you know, I read in this documentary that dolphin beep is very similar to human beep. Yeah, I mean, but I don't is know. Is the beep I, I the I, word come here? <laughs> It's an organ. A pussy? <laughs> a dolphin pussy is the closest to human pussy. I think I did hear about that. Glug, glug. I mean, the horse is going to be okay. I mean, I really love that show, My Little Pony. Glug, I don't know. <laughs> is, is this your genuine pitch for climate <laughs> filming? What are we talking what? about? <laughs> what, what you... We're talking about... It's, but isn't that... I mean, listen, just hear me out. <laughs> it starts off with a guy just doing obvious environmental destruction. I think a fake, thick water or something down the drain resembling oil with maybe like a drop of red food coloring whatever it is and then it just goes totally off the rails that like <laughs> the guy's a total like disturbed I mean he doesn't even like the climate so I think the judges should be in favor of this the non-climate enjoyer is, is his major <laughs> concern is which animals uh, you know he could use for his own immediate benefit whether that be sexual or uh, you know, whatever the case might be and then the climate person's like no god just stop please you're gonna get us. You're gonna kill us all. I don't know. <clears throat> it, it's just a brainstorming. We're right. brainstorming right now. Yeah. I have seen a lot of videos lately of these climate change uh, advocates or whatever the fuck. Uh, Throwing spaghettios at paintings. Uh, there's that, but they're also like just sitting in the road blocking traffic. And I've seen a lot of videos in the last week of uh, the drivers fighting back and like literally <coughs> dragging these people out of the road by their hair. So maybe it could be a story that it perhaps is uh, mocking these people a little bit, where the main character is so convinced that the climate change is like, if we don't do something right now, the entire world will be on fire by tomorrow. Like he's just so gung ho, dead set on this, and he like completely destroys his own his own life in the attempt to uh, you know spread the word and, and inconvenience his fellow man with this uh, stupid fucking belief. So it, it could be. Uh, Is there a that vegan kind of film? I think that could be the same plot for both. <laughs> mm, uh, not that I'm seeing. Or we could op maybe uh, like yeah, like uh, somebody who you know we got a lot of portly gentlemen. Maybe uh, you know somebody being very pretentious and preachy about how they're saving the planet by eating impossible whoppers <laughs> yeah like, there's so many details we could plug in, in about how stupid and the person is take somebody right to the ground and be like you fuck mm -hmm. don't you know how much they're farting <laughs> okay so we've got a general idea of uh the main character has no. lost his a complete mind because he <laughs> believes in climate change too much <laughs> That's right. uh, next one doppelganger slash mistaken identity i guess well, that's again. a genre We've got, uh, I don't know, we'll put a long hair wig on Biggs, and okay. uh, me and him can be, you know, the, uh, maybe E-Rich is our boss at our job or whatever. One of us is really good and one of us is really terrible, but it's, you know, we keep on getting mistaken for whatever the other person is doing. Uh, have you seen the film Enemy starring Jake Gyllenhaal? Nope. That is the ultimate doppelganger mistaken identity film. So uh, maybe if we get unlucky enough to land on that one, we can just rip off that movie somehow. Sounds good. Uh, food film, Iggy. That's, that's talk about bread and butter. I mean, that's the <laughs> definition. That's right. Me and Biggs together at Jethro's. <laughs> You're just doing the... a food challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Now, my idea for a uh, food film is a guy who wants to be a competitive eater, and it's like maybe we'll do a mockumentary style, and it's okay. him like training up, and he's talking about like his whole life has been building up to this. Like he's just constantly eating hot dogs. He wants to win the contest. Uh, and like just really a portrait of that person's misery and like what their life is like. I think we could do a lot of funny stuff with that. And really any of these, we could also make mockumentary because that's the easiest filmmaking technique of all time. Uh -huh. A great excuse for any you know, camera shaking or anything like that. Uh, but lots of options for food film. How about a heist, Aggie? What would we be heisting? Well, I do just happen to have a large amount of legitimate currency that we could bundle up in a thing, and uh, let's see. And it should be small scale, because we have to keep in mind, we only have two days, and it has to be shit that we basically already have right. for free. 
So it'd have to be like, you know, street level heist. Like, oh, I heard that Aggie's got, you know, eight, five grand locked up in his little uh, Walmart safe. We could throw know. a little, like, uh, drama behind it, you know, like uh, maybe a robbery gone wrong. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Okay, so heist, pretty easy to figure out. Yeah. Martial arts film. Hmm, you want to go uh, Steven Seagal on us, Aggie? You can be doing karate chops and kicks and shit. Or, yeah, I'll... does sumo wrestling count as martial arts? Because we really uh, with we Biggs and Erich strengths. and you, I mean, we got a lot of <laughs> big right. boys. I was, I'm willing to throw down and give my approval to that right now. I'll bring the body oil. Okay, <laughs> we can draw a nice circle in uh, your backyard or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, medical slash doctor film. That's going to be a nightmare. We do not have any costumes or any props for that at all. I think we could do a comedy angle of it. Let's get like some Tic Tacs or something and be like, uh, you know, <clears throat> I could be Mr. Chud and be like, <laughs> I've watched so many medical commercials. How hard could it be? And I just like, you know, have like a mortar and pestle and like grind up like a Tic Tac and a couple sweet tarts or whatever. And I kind of go like, and then I just sort of give Biggs a tic tac or something, and he just starts convulsing. And I'm like, uh, I throw a sheet over him or whatever. And I can start like, I, we could drop a lemonade stand like outside in your yard or whatever, and have you rich come up, and I'd be like, no man, it's legit. Like a snake oil <laughs> kind of doctor, <laughs> like he he's a complete con man, and he's it, it, it could be a commentary about how maybe our medical professionals in the United States might be more influenced by who's giving them some money uh, as opposed to the actual science behind medication and what is actually helpful for people. Yeah. You know, some scathing <laughs> commentary in that regard, maybe. Bigs and E. Rich just dropped down. I'm like. Natural causes. What can you do? Mm. And then I just got like money falling out of my pockets. Yeah. Oh, they died suddenly. Nothing could have. Who could have predicted this would happen? Uh, mystery movie. That'll be easy. That there's yeah, basically detective suspense. Yeah. All plays into the same ballpark. And we were thinking of uh, doing some eggy noir and have you like a noir detective. So that'd be easy for that. Mm. Uh, road trip movie. Pretty much self-explanatory. <laughs> just any excuse for the characters to go on a road trip and then having a little adventure. Yeah. Maybe. Um... Okay, so we have, <clears throat> we're out, we're like, yeah, we should quit our jobs. Woo, yeah, we don't care, man. This country, everything's going, uh, whatever, you know, whatever we're saying, we're just all on some free stuff or whatever. <clears throat> so all of a sudden we're kind of driving and you're like, or whoever's driving a vehicle, <clears throat> oh, something's wrong. <clears throat> and somebody's out, you know, you're out there on the side of the road and just like, you know, we kind of, the vehicle kind of slowly pulls over, <sighs> out of gas. Oh, what's that up there? Oh, there's a casino over there. Let's, uh, <laughs> we got to you know. win the gas money or something. <laughs> Someone's uh, going to help us out over there. And then, I don't know. I, I guess my, my brainstorm is kind of falling off. But, you know. So <laughs> you just want to go to the casino? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, with, with the right framing and the right, you know, sort of emotion behind it, we wouldn't even have to really gamble that much. But just, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> see, you put in like $5 and see it like spin down to zero and then just. I don't, I don't What's know. that to do with it's a road a- trip movie? <laughs> <laughs> it was on the road. I mean, listen, the road, living and dying by the road, you know, that's uh, mm. something. Okay, a school <laughs> film. This will be a tough one. I mean, I've already made a, a school short film about uh, E. Rich's school for Christian learning or whatever the fuck that movie was about. Uh, so I guess, but I don't know if we have access to an actual school setting. I might have to call my old high school teachers or something, but it, it could happen. I mean, they're not going to be... No, there's no school in session on the weekend in July, so... Yeah, there's a uh, historical, like, one-room schoolhouse near where I live that's out of state. Uh, hey, they won't know that if, where we're filming. Fuck okay, it, yeah. we'll take the three-hour trip to do it. Committee, don't watch this. Yeah. <laughs> but school film, what would the plot be? Like, we don't have any kids. Like, it's a bunch <laughs> of 30-year-old men. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna ape Billy Madison a little bit. Okay. I mean, for me, actually, yeah, I never, I, I got a fake, I, essentially my diploma when I graduated was, uh, like, manipulated, but they just went with it because they needed more people to graduate to maintain their funding. So we could actually go on a realistic angle there and have me pulled You're back. trying to get your actual diploma? Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily... But we don't have any kids! I mean, fuck sickos, YouTube, but fuck, <laughs> like, what are we gonna do? 
We don't have uh, a classroom full of kids. I think I know uh, where one three-year-old child may be able to be used for filming uh, in, mm. in a 20-mile, 30-mile uh, radius. Chucky? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, social commentary, pretty much half of our ideas already were some uh, biting social satire. Mm. Social media slash influencer film. Now, you might think that's easy because that's both of our real lives already, but... <laughs> well, I do have Martin Scarelli's uh, contact, so we could... Yeah, we could. I mean, if he's like in a digital thing, that's all right. I mean, he doesn't have to be like you know. He's we're on the computer in here. This yeah, area. technically a, was filmed in Iowa. I yeah, guess we've got to film the monitor that's in Iowa. Why the fuck would we want him in our movie? Yeah, he's got a social media presence. He got influencer presence. You know, mm. maybe was, God, I was trying to figure out how to get some recognition out here. You know, I've been posting a selfie of myself looking like this every single day for the last thirteen <laughs> years, and I still only have one follower. Well. Oh, somebody's giving me a call. Who's that? Martin. Martin, how did you get so popular? Every person who I know is always talking about you. I think they said they want to Kyle you, or I can't, I don't know. I'm, I'm illiterate. Uh, but like, where did you get so much recognition? And then he could just have like a 30 minute speaking part or whatever. <laughs> I don't know if you. This could also. Uh, <laughs> this is the, your the, movie the, the idea. Medical, the, the medical <laughs> idea, or whatever. You're know, the medical. Uh, this could correlate and it'd be like. Eggie, you just gotta make sure that those gay people can't get their medication. <laughs> and then Biggs and Erich could be there with some rainbow flags, and I'd be like, ha, me and Martin are gonna take, uh, I don't know. It's brainstorming, folks. It's, brainstorming. <laughs> it's, it's a real storm, and it's raging. I, I think this could also go back to like the, the up and coming rapper mockumentary kind of thing. Like, it's all basically the same idea. That's true, yeah. Uh, sports film slash game film. So I. I don't know if we're any good at sports, but I'm glad they put game in there. You could be an up-and-coming eSports yeah, player of some kind. Your computer can handle those old Nintendo games I like to play. Yeah, like you're trying to break the record on Mario or some stupid thing, and we could add some fun and drama to it. Mm -hmm. That's pretty easy. Uh, there's two more. Spy slash espionage film. We can bring it back to the heist type deal. <sighs> sure, yeah. Heist, Go suspense, drama. Going undercover into like a gang and uh, there's like the the gang of uh, the, the, the obese Chad gang and I have to like go <laughs> undercover and I stuff my shirt with pillows and stuff and that they, they can't find out I'm secretly skinny. That could be our, our spy espionage film. Mm -hmm. And finally, vacation slash holiday film. I, I guess any holiday I actually just have a movie about that. So I hate to come back to this point, but I'm um, having casino. Been, uh, well, no, I mean yes, but hear me out. This. What? No, no, because uh, I, I went on a cruise many years ago with a uh, older female relative who I think has since passed, but she was about like 80 years old at the time, and uh, she went on the cruise specifically just to play on the casino on the cruise ship, and she was there for like 18 hours a day at like 80 years old at the tables. <clears throat> so I don't know we'd have to <clears throat> kind of have like a I mean I don't know why <laughs> I don't know how this would kind of thread together to make like an engaging plot but maybe uh, like I was the one who invited everybody on the cruise and um, all of you are like I don't, I don't know if there's any beaches or whatever you're nearby but none of you can like you know it's <laughs> you're stuck I don't know you get left the cruise just leaves you at the beach and you're trying to like get a hold of you me. You want to film this there. in Iowa? <laughs> Where the fuck are we get a cruise ship? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, how about this, Aggie? Let's let's focus more on like the holiday aspect of it, less right, than the vacation. Okay. All right, you all know, right. like Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween. There's so many obvious movie ideas just if you focus on one of those holidays. Mm -hmm. Could be, uh, you know, Thanksgiving is coming up and you're desperately trying to get all the food prepared or something, you know, a, we could have a story. A, this could intersect with the climate. We could have like, uh, you know, this is the first year we're having a pure soy turkey and I don't mm. care what you chuds have to say <laughs> about it. And, uh, you know, I guess I don't know how large Erich is, but maybe he's the thinnest of the three he's the largest of the three oh, really? i would i mean i haven't seen him in years but erich i'll show you our old 48 hour film you see biggs and erich together as the henchmen and they're basically the same size oh, okay. fucking big but the thing is erich is tall as well so he's very imposing okay so yeah it could be like uh listen at this year's lgb thanksgiving you know what we're switching over to soy turkey and i don't care what anybody has to say about it look at these emissions and it's just some chart with a bunch of numbers on it that means nothing mm -hmm. <clears throat> then we could lead into uh like another like this could also be part of the thriller thing like you know they strangled me to death uh for trying to feed them soy instead of grease or whatever <laughs> yeah i think uh 
uncomfortable dinner scenes are always a, a highlight of any film. So we can just go. The nutty professor, you know, uh, we learned all. Eddie Murphy told us fat people farting at a table is True. instant comedy gold. Yeah, we could add that in there for sure. <laughs> all these funny fat people farting. Uh, yeah, it, my. My parents have like a big dining room table, so if we had to film a big dinner scene with a bunch of people, we could easily go there for that. Uh, my dad also has a wood lot full of uh, just giant logs and mountains of logs and, and timber and stuff. So if we ever need anything, you know, to film there, some sort of lumberjack eggy scenario, we have that option. Uh, my high school friend lives in downtown Des Moines in the city, and she said she has a great view from her, you know, apartment. So we had another location. So there's a lot of different possibilities and things we can utilize and skills we can harness to uh, make a film that will almost assuredly not win. <laughs> but uh, I think the attitude I'm approaching this with is, of course, we're not going to win. We're not in this to win, uh, and I'm not even in this to entertain the audience at the festival that's right i just want us to make a piece of kino that speaks to us something that we would be proud to say we made and if it if the audience for it is literally just us and only we get something out of it that is a-okay with me i don't even care anymore uh trying to appeal to an audience is the lowest form of entertainment possible mm -hmm. there's nothing that's authentic right. or genuine that'll mm -hmm. come out of that so you know, fuck what I said in that one video about how we put too many Bane for you jokes in our short film. Uh, that was the right thing to do because that's, I mean, that movie lives on in my head uh, because of the choices we made. So fuck it. We are going balls to the wall all weekend making the movie we want. They might not even approve to play it in the theater. <laughs> that's fine. I paid my 158 fucking dollars or whatever to get in. You don't have to support the video when it comes out on YouTube, but it is greatly appreciated. I think fans of us will like it no matter what we do, so I'm not too worried about the YouTube approval. Mm. But uh, I just want everybody to know we're going to try to have fun with this and make something that's really Kino, and I hope you guys enjoy it. And I'll post it as soon as the contest allows me. And if you live in the area and you want to go see us up on the big screen, uh, go check out the website. It should have the listings. Our, our team name is the Kino Commandos, so right. figure out when our showtime is. We don't know yet as of this recording. Uh, Eggy, it's been one hell of a podcast. I'm ready to go pee again. Yeah, me so, too. <laughs> uh, do you have any final thoughts for the folks at home? Well, I just want to say shout out to everybody that smashes that like and subscribe button because as long as somebody's rocking with what we got going on, you know, that's who we keep doing it for. So appreciate y'all very much. Peace, people.